<laughs> All right, welcome everyone. It is our Tuesday night mental wellness and um, session. And tonight is a hot, hot female topic. We are talking about balancing hormones balancing hormones. And so I brought on one of my favorite women that um, is to me a natural guru of balancing hormones because she has personally, personally had to do it. She claims to not be an expert in it, but she really is. I think you become an expert when you have to like overcome something. And this woman has. So Dana Lewis empowers people. And I love this. Listen up to stop faking fine. I love that because drop a one in the chat box. If you have been guilty of, I'm fine. How are you today? I'm fine. And you're really not. You're really faking it because you're really not fine. Look at all the ones showing up. So she helps empower people to stop faking fine and to live out their purpose over protocol. You know, I met Dana a few years after she tragically lost her husband. And she's the father. She's the father. <laughs> you weren't the father. I'm not the You're father. the mother. You're the mother um, of her three. She's the mother of three young boys. How old were your boys when your husband passed away? They were oh, young. they were they were young. They were six, eight, and ten. Yeah, young, young, young. Yeah. And you know, he went quickly with cancer. It was a shock. It was unexpected, and you nearly um, suffocated. Mm -hmm. After that, living by the should do's of others, mm -hmm. everyone was telling you what you should do. And today she shares the lessons of a thriving, active life. And she does one-on-one -on -one coaching and corporate workshops. So listen, I'm really excited to um, really pick Dana's brain because she loves to coach people on lifestyle wellness which really focuses on stress management. And this is what really screws up our hormones, people. And she's going to help you to growth mindset. And it starts in your gut with your microbiome. So she also, if that's not enough, that's not enough. She's a master's degree in mechanical engineering. <laughs> really? Really? Like what else do you do? You bake cakes too? What else do you do? But <laughs> no, I don't bake cakes. I do not, do not come over here for any cake. I don't either. I, do not I don't cakes. either. I go to my mother-in-law from that. But her real credit is mastering the daily habits of and delivering consistent results. And I love that. I love that. So listen, Dana, welcome to our Tuesday night mental wellness. It has been such a joy to just see you blossom into just a, a successful coach and businesswoman and just uh, become just a sister to me. So welcome. Thanks for yes. joining us. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. Like the subject is so dear to my heart. And when you say that, when you first met me, I was overwhelmed and I don't even know what other words I would put to it. Like not myself. Yeah. And rightfully so. You had lost your husband. I mean, you had a lot going on. You were 40? Yeah, 40. He 40. was 40. He was 40 and I was 40. Our boys were, we have three boys. They were six, eight, and 10. And the shock of him dying, he was healthy, ran races. We ate what I thought was, you know, salads, low calorie, fat-free, all of the, we, we looked really good from the outside. So mm -hmm. to think that you would have cancer raging in your body that would literally take you off this planet within six weeks of realizing that you had it was, it blindsided me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and there's like, what do you do when you're faced with that? So the engineer in me went looking for answers. I was like, well, I am a master fitness instructor. I, I teach instructors how to teach classes. So I, I'm, I'm an expert in exercise, right? I taught myself as being an expert in nutrition and yet I'm standing here and my husband just literally dropped dead. So I was like, okay, clearly I've missed something. I've missed right. something. There's more to life than these two elements than fitness and nutrition. I've, I've missed something. So I went on a journey and the nerd in me read and I read and I read, and I kind of like to tell people that I got a PhD in cancer, even though I really, there's no certification for that. I just, <laughs> I just read. Not and funny. I, was like, I was like, it's funny because I, 
because I read and I wanted to learn and I wanted to understand. I wanted to take ownership in that death. I wanted to take ownership in that process. And I wanted to say, how can I do better for myself, for my children, for those, how can I learn from this experience? What did we do wrong? And I read a lot of books. Like I read a book by Suzanne Summers of all people, like, cause she had cancer and of all of the books that I read, she was one of the people that really talked about gut health Interesting. and that, right. Interesting. And then I read a bunch of other books. I was introduced to Dr. Um, Myers, who's on our board. I was introduced by Googling and looking at other things and your gut health kept getting dripped in all of these books. Nobody connected the dots, but I started to learn. And then I started to become a mad scientist. I was like, I'm going to yeah. go, buy, I'm going to go buy all the supplements. I'm going to go buy, I'm going to start making these crazy smoothies for my kids. Mind you, nobody would eat what I was making. Cause they were like, that doesn't taste good. I don't <laughs> like it. And I was spending like thousands of dollars at the grocery store doing all of these things. The point of the story is that I learned about our gut health and I learned about your hormones. And in the process of me processing all of that, I also realized that I was spinning out of control, right? Yeah. So if you bring this back, if you bring this back to hormones, like we have five main hormones. And prior to having my husband die, I thought about, I thought about hormones as estrogen and progesterone progesterone, right? Like your sex hormones. And you're like, my, right. hormones, are, my hormones are fine. Cause I have a good sex drive or I have a whatever, like that is, yeah. that is what I thought 10 years ago about hormone balance. And what I have learned is that it's insulin. That's your metabolism. It's your fat storage. It's what regulates your metabolic rate. And then I've learned about melatonin and you actually create that naturally. And that helps you sleep, which helps your brain repair and rest exactly. and, and function. And then I learned about cortisol, which is your fight or flight hormone, which is what either allows you to show up with grace or be a crazy lunatic because you're like, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Right. And like, I could, relate, right. I could relate those hormones to my reaction to death and the reaction to solo parenting and the reaction to all that I was consumed with. But I also really kind of dove deeper into like, okay, cortisol. My husband was a high achieving executive that was driving life at a pace that most other people were not driving. So like his fight or flight hormone for sure was up to here. He lived a life that he loved and I don't have any regrets on that regard, but the missing piece was that we didn't address that. Mm -hmm. You kind of like America today, and we can talk about this, like we pride ourselves on being busy and being stressed. So true. So true. Amen. And, and that's like, so wrong. <laughs> so wrong. It's, it's, it's necessary in moments. Like you need to be right. like cortisol right. rising for stress is actually really good. Like, but when it becomes acute stress is really good for your metabolism. It's really good. Like it gets you going. It's really good. Yeah. But when you have that chronic stress day to day, to day, to day, and you don't have reprieve. So like I can, I did not notice this in the moment, but I can look back and realize, well, he only slept a couple hours a night. Like he never got really good sleep. He didn't ever complain about it, but he never got that melatonin that really set in to get his body to rest and repair right. because his fight or flight hormone was always high. And so interesting. It just, you know, I have to, just, I have to just say, because we're so talking for women, but this is really for guys too. This yeah. is for 
everybody because we all have hormones and you're really touching on some key things. We live in this country. We live to work instead of, you know, working to live. And we don't know how to take time off. We don't know how to enjoy it. Um, melatonin, you know, when, when you say that you make your own melatonin, one of the things when my husband was at his sickest moments and journey, they truly tried everything to get him to sleep. I wasn't sleeping, dealing with all the stress. We tried melatonin. People think that that's natural. Melatonin that you take is not natural. It's a synthetic hormone. Right. And your it's body actually, your body actually stops producing mm -hmm. naturally made melatonin when you take it artificially. If, the, if you guys are, if you guys are learning something, drop a melatonin in the chats. If you take artificial melatonin, your body stops producing and it's a hormone. Melatonin is a mm -hmm. hormone that you need naturally produced period. End of story. And you can make that melatonin by healing your gut microbiome or supporting better, not healing, supporting your gut microbiome, but like by walking outside in the sunshine, but you have to have the yeah. energy, the drive and the motivation to get outside, to have the sunshine, to want to go walking. Right. So yes, I yes. love it. There's a lot of melatonins in the chats. Like it's, it's information that isn't not talked about. No. And it's so important. I mean, sleep, sleep is like the thing that almost everybody struggles with, including children. Mm -hmm. And we just shove like these quick fixes that don't fix it. Your yeah. band-aids that, you know, you rip it off and it's like, ouch. And it's, there's still an owie there. I like, think it's not better. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about when we're under stress, because I think the world right now is stressed. Mm -hmm. um, to say the least. And you have this chronic stress when your husband passed away, when my husband got really sick and we've had, we both have had years, different circumstances, but years of a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. I feel Dana, that the world is like caught up to you and I, mm -hmm. I feel like the world has caught up to us where there's this chronic stress of inflation and change and yuckiness and division and this and that. And so people aren't sleeping good. People are crabbier than ever before. I mean, I'm a afraid to go out on the freeway because of <laughs> road rage. It's yeah. so bad. So can you talk to us about what happens when the body is under chronic stress and how, talk to us about symptoms. I think people relate to symptoms about how they feel and why is that happening? Yeah. So if we talk about just the, the a list of signs of high cortisol. So if your cortisol is that means your fight or flight hormone is high, which is stress. It's weight gain often in the face, the chest and the abdomen. It's fatigue. This one resonates with me the most because when I'm really stressed, I can take a nap on a dime because that's how I relate. That's how I shut off, but it's fatigue. It's high blood pressure. It's skin issues. A lot of times you can have acne, you can have excessive stretch marks, but it's anxiety depression, irritability, right? Those are the three things for me. Like I did not realize that I had high functioning anxiety until mm. I didn't have it until I healed my gut microbiome. And then all of a sudden I was like, and it wasn't even me. It was the people closest to me that were like, when are you going to lose it? Like, when are, when are you, like your child is doing this, like your eight-year-old child is doing X, Y, Z, when are you going to lose it? And I was like, oh, wow. Like, I actually, I'm going to make this a teachable moment. Look at me. I'm going to parent. I'm going to make this a teachable moment. And I'm just going to like talk to this child with a calm voice and I am going to be the grown up. But when your fight or flight hormone that cortisol is up to here. You don't have the bandwidth to process right. that. Right. So then you're like, you're just firing. And that is for me, how anxiety showed up. Does that make sense? hundred percent. You're more likely to overreact than calmly respond. Yeah. And, and that is America. So what I want to give people encouragement is like, listen, there are tools that we're going to go through and talk to you 
that can help you. They have transformed both Dana's life and my life. I agree with you, Dana. I was very, it's why I was really drawn when I met you um, because we're very similar in some ways. I didn't think I had an anxiety issue. I didn't think I had a depression issue. Mm -hmm. I was in complete survival mode. There was a lot on my shoulders. Um, and I didn't want to let anyone down because it was my family. It was my No, but also, but also we're like moms mm -hmm. and we want to, you want to rise to the occasion. hundred percent. You want, you yeah. want I, I wanted, and I still do. I want Absolutely. to be ev everything to each one of my children, to my, you know, to all of the people in yeah. my world, you want to show up and carry that weight, but you yeah. need the tools to be able to do it with grace yeah. and self-love. Like I, I'll yeah. throw that out there to be able to actually feel good about it and not give, 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 and then pass out. No, I, I totally agree. Moms are notorious, um, but so are dads. Parents are notorious for eating the leftovers. And that's what I was doing. I was eating the leftovers and I, I felt guilty if I even went for a walk by myself or I felt guilty if I took some time out for myself. And that's what we have to eliminate. So let's talk about solutions. Let's get focused on solutions on how you and I have overcome the, these raging hormones out of control from chronic serious stress. Um, so we started to work on our guts. And we, you found the brand that I found. You were introduced through a dear, dear friend of both of ours um, to Amare. Talk to us about that. What drew you to the brand Amare to help you with this, this gut story? That you're well, reading? I mean, let's talk about the unicorn scientist first and foremost. <laughs> so I already, I already mentioned that I was reading and I knew that gut health was important I was already buying probiotics. I was buying fish oil. I was buying a bunch of things, but I was the consumer that thought, well, if it's refrigerated and it's expensive, that's what I need. So I was spending a lot of money randomly buying things. And then when I was, right. in, when I was introduced to Amare, I was like, wait, Dr. Sean has spent his entire life focused on cortisol in the right strains of probiotics to help your body regulate hormones, support your hormones and live your, with the most energy and sleep the best. I'm all in. I was like, give me everything. I will try all of it. By the way, the return policy is amazing. So I was like, well, if this doesn't work, then I'll just take it back. But like, yes, I will try, <laughs> give it all, like give it yeah. all to me. I want, I want, I'm not dipping my baby toe in. I'm jumping all in because I already was trying things. And when you're trying supplements and you're not noticing a change, the supplements not working. So like I was, I was right in the sense that fish oil is good for you. Probiotics are good for you. Protein powder is good for you. But the choices that I was purchasing weren't moving the needle in my life. So yes. I was, I was like, yeah, I was in like, fact, okay. in fact, I have to just interject here and just say this. I was with a very reputable nutrition company for 22 years prior to me finding Amare. And I, the joke was, but it's the truth. It's the honest God's truth. I was taking bowl, bowl fulls of vitamins and the more stressed I was, Dana, the more I was taking because it wasn't working. And I got to the point where I remember telling like one of my best friends, like there's something wrong with me. I don't know what it is. I am so exhausted. And I felt like this wasn't even, even absorbing. Mm -hmm. And I, I was right. My intuition was right. I was not absorbing it. I was, you know, taking so much. And what's interesting is somebody just wrote in the chat box, my fiance needs to hear this. I can't wait to show him this. You know, what's interesting. And her name is Christina. Christina, I relate to you because when I first saw this and Dana, you started this, you, you, you started the, this conversation of what led you to this was what happened to your husband. I think it's a natural tendency, tendency for us to look at the ones we love. Mm -hmm. And, and so when, when I started to look at what my husband was struggling with, I spent years in hospitals, years in clinics, years in doctor's offices, talking to caregivers, to family members and to the patients. And I was seeing a common denominator, no matter what the illness, I was seeing people extremely fatigued and a lot of pain exhausted. They couldn't sleep. They had 
they were just so anxious and stressed. And so it was those things, you know, no matter what it was, those were the feelings that they had. So when I looked at Amari and I saw that they were very specific to those symptoms, I remember thinking, oh my goodness, if this can help my husband, I will shout this to the rooftops because everybody feels, most people struggle, and somebody else put in the chat box, I know everybody, I know tons of people that are struggling with sleep. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Mm -hmm. And so there are natural tools out there that can help because what happens is when we go to the doctor, there's a time and place for medications, but most of the time they throw us on pharmaceutical drugs that have side effects that are another band-aid. And then they, those side effects will need another pharmaceutical, another band-aid. And we start band-aiding. And are we really yeah. feeling better? Are we when, really feeling better? No. Even, even when you talk about pharmaceuticals, and there is a time and a place for that. Like my husband right. was on chemo. I mean, he was on chemo. Like there was a time and a place for that where you wow. run to that. But when you're talking about anxiety, depression, and you take a med, you take an SSRI, you are shutting off certain neurotransmitters in order to only let your happy neurotransmitters work or one neurotransmitter work. And that is an approach that maybe will work for a time. And then you have to up the ante and you have to up the ante and you have to up the ante. And the side effects are weight gain, which makes you irritable. So then you up the ante to be not irritable. And it's like, you're on this crazy train of what are you putting first, where if you can give your gut microbiome the specific strains of probiotics and prebiotics that are for mental wellness, for depression, for anxiety, for metabolism. Like there are so many different strains, which is why we have so many different products because it's like, exactly. what are you wanting it to do? And what do you need to support? And it's about your body. Like God made your body amazingly, beautifully. Like you're an awesome human being, but you yeah. need- you need the support and you just don't get it from your average diet. And so if you can add those specific strains, you can do all of those things. And if you're supporting all of that, then you will sleep better because you feel better because your body is producing that natural melatonin and then you can rest and repair. And then you wake up tomorrow and you feel better. And you're on this like amazing trajectory of fulfillment. Totally. Totally. You know what I want to encourage everyone to do is this, <clears throat> just make a list of the top three to five things that you feel you're struggling with, with your health. Are you, are you having hot flashes? Are you feeling like, you know what? I don't think I have anxiety, but after listening to these two, maybe I do. <laughs> if your family is like, Oh my gosh. Um, you probably do. Sorry, but you probably do. You're probably having mood swings. Nobody yes. wants to admit I'm moody. I'm having mood swings, but you know, just saying we've all been there. We've all right. been there. Short fused, short fused. Um, if you're, if you're not calmly responding to situations and you're more quickly to overreact, we've all been there. Just own it. So write down what's bothering you. If you're struggling with weight, you know, if you're struggling with that, a brain fog, um, I remember at the worst of my husband's illness, we were living out of the camper, Dana. I, I just remember like a whole day would go by. And I, I remember going to bed that night. I didn't really do anything. I was in a camper, but it's like, I don't know what happened to the time, but I, I accomplished nothing. I'm like, how did that happen? How did an entire day go by? And then I accomplished nothing. I could not think. I had the world's worst extreme case of brain fog. I can only imagine what you had when, you know, when your husband was so sick, when he passed and then after, I mean, was the brain fog just like there? The brain, like the brain fog, the brain fog is there. And like you were saying with anxiety, I never associated myself with having anxiety. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it was because everybody's like, oh, I'm anxious. I'm anxious. And I'm like, what? Suck it up and just make it happen. Well, that's for the drama queens, right? That's yes. I, I was like, that is not queen. who I am. That is not who I am. I will not declare yes. that. Same. I, Same. I do not have anxiety. I'm going to like make a list. I'm going to get up early and I'm going to get it done. But you want to know what? Like I, I didn't do it with yeah. joy. I was short right. to the news. If you came across me with a different opinion, I was quick to tell you that you were wrong and this is what we were doing. And lo and behold, that wasn't like, that's anxiety. Like yeah, as it, as it turns anxiety. out, 
that's anxiety. And it gives you brain fog. And for the most part, it makes you bloated because your cortisol is high and you hold on, your body is like, I don't know what this crazy woman is doing, but she's a lunatic. And so I don't know what to do with her metabolism. So what I'm going to do is hold on to every calorie she eats. Well, that only only makes you more anxious. If you're listening to this, this is what I'm going to recommend. Um, Somebody put it in the chat box. I really recommend doing a three day cleanse with reboot and just it, it, it's, it's through clean food. We t- we tell you what to eat. Um, <clears throat> we have a program that even tells you when to eat. There's different times of the day you want to eat. And there's different times of the day you do not want to eat because your body needs a break. It needs rest. So I would really encourage you to follow those guides, talk to the person that all, everything that we're going to go through now, the person that brought you here, if you're listening to the replay, eventually, um, we have these guides for you, but try it. What do you have to lose? Like Dana said, everything's hundred percent money back guarantee. What do you have to lose? Learn the foods to eat, learn the foods to avoid because you're feeding the monster. You're feeding the monster when you're eating the wrong foods and the monster's growing within you. Silence the monster by starting eating the right foods and supplementing with the right bacteria. And all of a sudden the angel, (laughs) you know, comes out. It's like, you are, you're calmer. So I would definitely recommend to, to look at those guides of reboot. And we have a great program called GBX fit that uh, is wonderful to help you. Um, GBX fit is great because it can help with the melatonin crisis in your body, um, just by eating foods during certain times of the day versus not what I would also recommend and and want to ask you, Dana is for people that are really, you know, on a scale of one to 10, I always look at like, where are you on a scale of one to 10? That was hard for me to personally answer because I, um, didn't want to think there was anything wrong with me because I had somebody else that was so sick in my life that I felt guilty for even saying that I might be feeling stressed or exhausted. Mm -hmm. Um, But to me, when I looked back at that scale of one to 10, the word stress resilient, did I feel resilient? I remember that was the one word that stuck out to me because I was like, what's that? What's resilient? I didn't know what, like, I've heard of it, but how does that, how is that your health? How is resiliency your health? And that's when I started to question myself going, I don't think I'm, I I don't think that's me. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, if you ask me and you're like, what were you on a scale from one to 10? I was like, I'm fine. Move along. Mm -hmm. Like I'm fine. Move along. I'm busy taking care of him. Oh, he died. Now I'm busy taking care of these children. I'm fine. And I didn't understand what stress resilience was until I had it. Like it's this, it came like stress for me, stress resilience and anxiety go hand in hand. Like I didn't recognize that I had anxiety until I didn't have it. And then Mm -hmm. when I didn't have it, now I have stress resilience which is I can show up in a crazy situation with more grace and that is helpful. But this whole gut health thing and the results that you get from the products that you're talking about is like, I didn't know what I didn't know until I had it. Exactly. And I I have no regrets and it takes time. So three months into this protocol, I had not only my children, my oldest at the time is the one that said to me, like, there's something different about you. Like you're, he was 16 and he was like, mom, there's something different about the way that you're reacting. And I was like, wow, there's a 16 year old telling me that he's happy. I'm not yelling at him. Like this is right. But it's real. Totally. Totally. So it, you know, I, what I found to be super helpful, Dana, and tell me what you think of this, is I yeah. focused on the top three to five things that I was struggling with the most. Yeah. And and that's what I want to encourage everybody to do. If it's sleep, we have something to help you sleep. If mm-hmm. you're really feeling like that overwhelmed feeling and like, you know, you're not getting things accomplished during the day that you really want to, and you know, you're capable of it, but you're just frustrated when you go to bed at night because you're like, I really didn't get much done. 
Um, I'd really recommend our mood product. Those that therapeutic line is there for you to help be the natural, the natural band-aids, but they're not really, they're not band-aids. They're the things that are going to help your body restore. And it's going to help give you um, results quickly. That's the therapeutic line. So sometimes you might need some of that as you're helping your, your body reset and reboot. But then what I would look at is the one thing that for me, Dana, that really changed things. And I wanted to ask you is I got onto the fundamental pack and I really focused very specifically on my gut health, my brain health, um, and my immune system. And I was able to think again, I was able to feel again. And I remember um, having a film crew out at our house. And I remember there's a video of me and I said, I, I can love again. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even realize that, that I was so, <laughs> was such a mess that I, I, I was numb. And, and I didn't well, know. when you're numb like that, which I resonate with that feeling, you put a wall up. You just totally. put a wall up, you put a wall up and you're like, you're over there and I'm over here and I'm just going to sit in my anxiety and maybe a little bit of my depression and I'm fine. I'm good enough. I'm going to function, but I'm just going to sit over here. And then when I get overwhelmed, I'm going to take a nap and I'm going to take myself out of life and yeah. then I'm going to show up again. And then I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to think to myself, I got nothing done that I'm proud of. Like I got nothing accomplished and it's a hundred percent. Yes. It's the fundamentals for sure. That's a deal. Like that's a deal breaker. Like that's where you start. And then in the moments, like what I love about mood plus is that I take it every morning religiously with my fundamentals, but on the afternoons that I'm like, you want to know what I now recognize that I'm feeling anxious. Yeah. I, I can take two more and I can be right back in the game. It's like 10 to 15 minutes. And my kids, when I see them spiraling out of control, I can hand them a kid's mood and I can be like, you need two seconds to yourself, take a hot lap around the house, shoot this, meet you in a minute. <laughs> and yeah. it has changed. It has changed our home vibe. Totally. So like when you get better as the parent, you can teach your kids to get better and then life is just better. It totally, you know, what I saw for 22 years in my former career is that, and I saw this religiously that people would get sick. They'd have a heart attack or they'd get pregnant. There's a heart attack or pregnancy. And then they would start to eat healthier. Okay? <laughs> no, it's true. True. 22 years. I witnessed this. Then they'd have the baby or they'd lose some weight and get their blood pressure at a normal pace. And then everything would go out the door again. Everything would go out the door. Okay. Mm -hmm. I saw this over and over and over again, but what I realized, okay, A, that's wrong, but B, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And Dana, you just spoke to the lifestyle that listen, we're all going to have really hard seasons. Some will be short. Some will be a day. Some will be an hour. Some will be weeks. Some might be years. We're all going to have these seasons, but what Amari has helped create is tools during those seasons. So Dana Mood Plus, you're able to monitor not only just on an average basis, I take two, but hey, when I'm having that moment, now I know what it feels like. Now I can help my body so it doesn't go into that fight or flight. And that fight or flight, it's like you go, it's like an astronaut that um, I'm not a sciencey or spacey person, but this is just what came to my head. It's like the astronaut that loses the connection and goes out into like space, into the gravity, and they're just, they're gone. They're floating forever. That's what happens if you don't get that fight or flight controlled. Would you agree, Dana? 100%. And when you talk about the person that wants to like get healthy for a hot second, if you can get your gut in a healthy place, your cravings don't go from from a high, high, I'm, I'm a nerd. So I'm going to do the sine curve from a high, high to a low, low, instead of going all the way up and all the way down, you can regulate that so that it goes up and down, but it's very minimal. So you're not gaining 20 pounds and losing 20 pounds. Yeah. You're, you're gaining two pounds and losing two pounds. And that's more manageable. And that also makes your anxiety and depression 
less of a pendulum swing yeah. because you're regulated. And it's all about that hormone balance. And that hormone balance starts in your gut. Like totally, totally. And I think too, it's freedom. It's freedom and flexibility to occasionally have a fun treat or occasionally if you like a glass of wine or occasionally like the thing that I've learned is a, a much healthier lifestyle for both my husband and I, our family, and now passing it on to thousands of people um, where we can live a freedom filled life where it's not so, I've seen people, and I've done this myself, where it's almost so rigid mm -hmm. with eating and exercise that that's not sustainable. And, and so you want to make it sustainable where you can have that cookie occasionally, but the more your gut is fed properly, you don't want 10 cookies. You might eat a half of one and you're like, eh, and then yeah, you have a, you have a bite, you indulge. And then you're like, you want to know yeah. what that wasn't as satisfying as I thought it was going to be. Exactly. Exactly. Dana, do you find the rest restoration of your gut health as you and I are both growing young? Let's just say it like that. Um, and these hormones are changing. Let's, I'd like to end this call here because I'm, I know what I'm noticing, but I want you to share what you're noticing. Um, the changes that we're starting to go through. Do you feel like they're not as severe? Do you feel like they're less? Do they feel like they're manageable? Tell us what that story is like for you. Oh my gosh. Well, for me, first and foremost, I am definitely pre-menopausal. I don't even know like what the title is. I'm sure there's a title, but I don't notice anything other than my cycle is not sure where it is but I don't have any symptoms. Like I don't have hot flashes. I don't have, I don't have any of the other things that go with it. So all that I can say is that I'm aging through that gracefully, but the number of people that are like, what are you doing? You are aging in reverse. What are you doing? And I'm like, all I'm doing is I'm on these products that support my gut. Your gut produces collagen naturally your gut supports actually your gut doesn't produce collagen but your gut supports your hormones and your hormones produce collagen naturally so your skin texture the wrinkles that you have the wrinkles that you don't have the the elasticity of your skin that all comes from your gut from your hormones supporting your body and so from an aging gracefully perspective like i'm loving it let's go i agree like, I, I agree. My husband is going to be 50. Um, and I'm a couple years behind him. I like to say more, but the truth is it's two years behind him. Um, <laughs> he's 49, I'm 47. And I, I, all I can say is I am feeling the best I have felt, yeah. if not ever in yeah. a very long time. And, and so I mean, I'm awesome. on the same page as Derek, like, yeah, I'm on I'm on the same page as Derek. Yes, yeah, it's possible. If you're listening to this, I don't care if you're 70. I don't care if you're 25. I have talked to people all in between all different ages, even younger and older. It's possible. Give yourself some time. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen overnight. What I encourage people to do is give it time, get into a more established routine. If you feel like you've plateaued, you know, some of you might be listening to this and going, I'm doing all those things, but I kind of feel like I've had plateaus. Me too. What I've had to look at is like, what do I have to change or what do I have to tweak? And usually it's a tweak. Maybe I'm not getting that sleep like I should be. Maybe I've been under more stress than I need to be. Maybe I'm not doing enough protein. Like you have to be very mindful. And the more in tune you get with your body, it's like Dana said, you start to notice like I'm feeling off. Because now, Dana, you know what it feels like to feel good. You know what it feels like to feel great. You know what it's like to, gosh, my thoughts are there. I'm cranking it out. I, I'm happy. I don't need to, like, yell at that person. Like, I can calmly respond. Now we know that, that yeah. that's possible. Yeah. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. yeah. Right? And when you talk about tweaking things, like, that is life. So yeah. one, one, one thing about these protocols is that it's not an all or nothing like, oh, it worked for me for mm. two months and now I'm, now I'm done. No, if you have plateaued, then it's tweaking. What do you need to yeah. do? And you have to be open to being on that journey with yourself, because if you're not open to being on that journey with yourself, then it's, there's nothing that you can do about so that. Good. 
I'm so glad that you said that because it is a journey and no two days are the same. And so we have to understand that our body's not always going to respond the same. And we just have to be more in tuned um, to listening more. So I want I could keep going. I, I could um, talk to you all night long, but Dana, I adore you and appreciate you. And I just, I thank you for sharing the vulnerable parts of your life that yeah. were so tragic and hard. Yeah. And how you've learned to rise up in faith and taking care of yourself. And you're a remarkable woman and, and mom and friend. And yeah. um, I'm blessed to blessed to know you. And for those of you listening, listen, if we gave you a little bit of hope, people, okay, that it is possible to feel better, listen, talk to the person that, that brought you here. Let's get you a plan. And I'm hopeful and excited that soon you'll be on one of these and you'll be sharing your story. So Dana, thank you. You are amazing. God bless you all. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. Bye everyone.